Uh, and welcome to um, uh, this, the third uh, annual UK Structural Engineers Declare Summit. Um, I'm super excited to, to, to be here with you this afternoon. Um, I'm Ed Clark. Uh, for those of you who don't uh, know me, um, I'm a, a member of the, of the iStructees Climate Action Group um, and also a member of the Structural Engineers Declare Steering Group. And I'm going to be guiding us through um, our agenda uh, for, for this afternoon. So um, we split this afternoon up into three sessions. Um, session one um, is going to be about uh, testing the current temperature. Where, where are we now? Um, and we'll share with you some of what structural engineers declare and the iStruct T have been up to over the past year. Um, but we'd also like to find out um, from you how you've been getting on as individuals and as firms and the progress that you've been making um, uh, around climate action over the past year and in terms of progress with the pledges um, of the declarations that many of you or your firms have signed up to. Uh, the second session uh, we've entitled at the crest of the wave and this is going to be a bit more about getting some specific uh, perspectives from a range of different firms um, and other institutions um, who, have, who have all made great strides over the past uh, year. And um, so we're going to be hearing from them and then you'll have a chance during that, um, during that session to, to, to quiz those presenters. We'll have a little bit of a Q&A session, a panel discussion at the end of that session. We're then going to take a short break and um, come back for our third and final session, um, which is about um, action. It's about next steps. Um, it's about asking ourselves collectively what more can we do? Um, are there specific things that we should be uh, aiming to commit to, perhaps even beyond the, the pledges that we've already signed up to within the declaration? Uh, we've, we've, for those firms who signed the declaration, that was, that was a couple of years ago, and we've all made progress in, in different, different ways over that time. And, 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 and now, now it feels like the right time to really review whether there's more we should be um, committing to, to, to achieve as we go forward from here. Um, so we're going to try and define some actions that we can take away from today um, and in this session you'll have a chance to to talk about all of that um, in some smaller breakout groups that we're going to put you into. So um, in a minute I'm going to hand over to Mike Cook um, uh, who's going to um, give also a short introduction and perhaps to provide um, some broader context around today's event in particular around how the work that structural engineers declare has been doing over the past year fits, uh, fits under the, the broader umbrella of, of the built environment declarations as a whole. But before I, I hand over to Mike, I just uh, uh, a bit of housekeeping to, to take care of, if you'll, if you'll permit me. So um, how to get involved. Um, so today is, is about engagement. We don't want this to be a sort of one way broadcast, um, uh, as it were. Um, but with a lot of people on the call, it's difficult to have a completely open dialogue, but we've tried to find different ways to allow you to engage um, with the conversation throughout the different sessions. Um, so you can post you can post questions or comments in the chat box throughout throughout the afternoon. Uh, in a minute, we're going to be using uh, Menti. I'm sure many of you are familiar with with Menti, uh, the Menti poll um, app. And um, uh, so we'll, we'll be able to get your your feedback through that. Uh, and later on in session three, we're going to be using um, some Miro boards. Again, I, I know many of you will be familiar with working with Miro. Um, and as I say, um, you can interact that in that way and through the panel discussion and the breakout sessions we have later. And after the event today, we're going to leave some of the chat rooms open. So if you want to uh, continue talking with any of the presenters or speakers today or just network with any of your colleagues or others who are on the call, then you're able to stay on and join one of those chat rooms and, and, and do that as well. Hopefully you've all got the, uh, the right version of Zoom. I think if you're on the call now, you probably have got the right version of Zoom, you're here. Um, uh, if you need any help, technical help throughout, throughout the workshop, then you can always um, uh, put something in the chat to the iStructT events team in the chat box. Um, if, if all else fails, you can email the events team at the iStructT with any queries. And just finally, just a note about copyright. So um, just to say that as far as we're, we're aware, we have copyright permissions for everything that we are going to show you this afternoon. Um, and you'll have seen that we are recording this. So, so hopefully that's okay. We want to be able to share this obviously with others later who are not able to join us today. Um, so that's all from me. I'm gonna stop sharing now. 
Mike, and um, over to you for, for an intro. Okay, Ed, thank, thanks very much. Yeah, I just wanted to say a few words, um, apart from saying thanks everybody for, for joining us and also adding in, uh, by the way, on chat, you'll find a, a full uh, program for, for, the, for the summit um, in, in detail. So uh, take a look in chat and, and the link there if you want it. Yeah, I just wanted to share my screen and um, I've just got uh, one or two slides um, to, to remind me to remind you um, that, that we're part of, of something even bigger than the uh, Structural Engineers Declare itself. So the Structural Engineers Declare is part of a family of declarations. And I just wanted to remind ourselves of this because, because it's incredibly important that we don't think we're alone in, in this, that we're part of a, a huge great industry, the built environment industry, if you like, um, construction, landscape, everything um, and we have all committed firms across across the world almost 2,000 businesses across the world now have have come under this umbrella built environment declarations all with very very similar wording all um, all saying you know recognizing that that we as, as as businesses need to meet the needs of society without breaching the earth's ecological boundaries and that we will need to see a paradigm shift. This is seriously big shifting. None of us have achieved anything like this, but but some some are building towards it, um, and we mustn't lose sight of it. Um, we, with our clients, we're going to have to commission buildings and infrastructure that is in balance with the natural world. These are the things that we're declaring. And finally, committing to strengthen our practices, working practices, to create outcomes that have more positive impact on the world around us. The declaration has many statements, but that seems to, for me, summarizes the magnitude of change that, that we're saying we need and that we're buying into. Globally, the declarations have gone across all of these different countries. Um, in many cases, engineers as well as, as, well as architects and now um, within architects declare and structural engineers declare, we're doing everything we can to increase the number of, of, of countries which have declarations to improve, increase the sort of harmony of commitment around the world. And then a third slide I just want to share with you. Back in the UK, um, this is the very strong built environment declares goes across all of these different aspects of our industry. Architects, structural engineers, civil engineers, building services, landscape designers, interior designers, and builders. We have contractors. We have 57 contractor businesses signed up to a very similar declaration and project managers. So I thought it was worth sharing that with you. So here we are sitting as uh, signatories to, to structural engineers declare and we have some serious structural engineering business to to talk about but um, we are part of of a much much bigger movement and we have to make as much as we can of, of that because we need to shift things ahead of us we need to shift regulations we need to shift government policy so uh, we need to use that power um, to, to its full and I thought I'd just remind us ourselves of that con of that um, context. So I'm going to stop sharing and I shall hand back to Ed or because Will is in my face, I assume I'm handing over to Will. I think you're handing back to me, Mike, oh, but, I, but I am going to rely on Will's input for this for this next section. But thank, thanks okay. for that overview, you Mike. It's really great and fantastic that we've seen those declarations gathering so much, so much momentum over, over the past over the past year. Um, and it really feels like that's um, and that's that's continuing at pace. So um, I'm going to share my screen again in a second, just to talk a little bit about some of the other activities going on in the industry and through the profession um, beyond uh, SED and the built environment declares, because um, you'll all be aware that there's a lot there's a lot going on um, right right now. Hopefully you can you can see that again. And this was uh, this is a sort of if you like a one page um, summary of uh, 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 all of the uh, well, and a lot of the other activities that are going on in, within the industry at the moment. And uh, uh, we thought it would be useful to just kind of put this all in one place just to kind of help um, keep track of, of, of what's going on. Um, you, sh you will have been sent this before the summit. Um, so you may some of you may have had a chance to read it already. If not, then then um, 
uh, you know it'd be worth doing 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 so afterwards and maybe we can put a copy of this in the chat as well throughout the afternoon in case you've um, you've not seen it or you've not got it um the the text on on here is too small to read as a slide i'm not i'm not planning to go through all of these different uh, activities but there are a few on here that that i would like to to highlight and just run through in a bit more detail um, so the first one of these is around carbon targets and um, over the past year we've seen a lot of progress, I think, in this area around um, uh, firms uh, setting, setting targets and um, measuring carbon uh, more uniformly across, across their projects and, and uh, using uh, uh, rating systems like LETI or the iStructee's scores rating system to evaluate projects and set targets to drive improvement. Um, and I think, you know, the iStruct T has done a lot of work in helping to establish a, a methodology around how we calculate carbon. Many of you will have, have, have read the How to Calculate Embodied Carbon Guide. And having that um, consistent method of approaching it to generate benchmark data to then set sensible targets, I think, has been a real um, area of progress over the past year. Uh, beyond targets for individual projects, we've also seen uh, many firms setting company-wide targets um, certainly around their own um, scope one to three emissions those are those are the, the emissions that you know how how much um, uh, energy we emit through our own business um, and their initiatives like race to zero that many firms have signed up to um, but in addition to that some firms have also gone a step further to publicly declare carbon targets uh, for all of their projects as a portfolio um, uh, as well as on an individual basis which is a really bold move over the past year the second area just to draw your attention to, um, I thought was, was pertinent is around COP26. Of course, um, we're all um, waiting with bated breath for, for, for this event in a couple of weeks time. And, but just to kind of highlight that the iStruct is hosting a, a public panel discussion around decarbonisation uh, on the Built Environment Day at COP on the 11th of November. And I'm gonna just ask Will Arnold as, um, as uh, iStruct T's head of climate action, just to say a couple of words about, about that. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, I mean, you described it quite well already. I mean, in short, we've got a we've got a panel with some pretty renowned speakers on it, who so are all going up to Glasgow for the afternoon to to attend um, and to speak at this this event. We're hoping to get pretty good in person turnout, but we'd love it to have a big online attendance as well. Um, so please do sign up with the link that's in the in the PDF that was just sent out by Kirsten if you didn't have this already. Um, in terms of what we're going to talk about, um, roughly based around four topics. How will the construction industry change in the next few years? What do we see happening to the materials production industries? Um, how can we encourage more reuse of existing buildings and infrastructure? And finally, what can a built environment professional do differently at work tomorrow? So quite a large range of things. We're, we'll probably end up touching on what happens at COP as well within all of that and should be, should be quite a good event. So hopefully see some of you there. Thank you, Will. Yeah, no, that sounds, that sounds great. Something to, something to sign up for. Um, and another thing to sign up for potentially is, is an event that's happening in 10 days time organised by uh, REBA, um, Royal Institute of British Architects, in collaboration with um, Built Environment Declares, which is, which is another summit event. Um, this time it's a two day event on the 28th and 29th of October, um, which uh, uh, will, will cover a broad, a really broad kind of spectrum of issues across the built environment. Um, and alongside this event, there is a report that you can you can download in advance. Um, and again, a link a link on the slide here um, that makes that that is a report that will go to government, be presented to government at COP, and um, makes uh, a lot of really strong recommendations for for um, recommendations for the government really as to what 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 needs to happen next to assist the construction industry in helping to move forward and decarbonize. Um, so again, you can sign up for the for the summit there and 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 you and download the report. I'd, I'd encourage you to do so. It's really it's got a lot in it. Built environment carbon database. So I think this is an important thing here because um, sharing uh, data on an open source basis is one of the pledges that that we've that we've signed up to with the declaration and sharing carbon data particularly. Um, I think is 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 an important thing to help build that database of benchmark data for us all to use um, when we're evaluating targets on projects. Um, and I would say that that, that 
as as much as many firms have made a lot of progress in in calculating embodied carbon on projects um, and doing that in a consistent way, I don't think we've we've yet made as much progress as we need in terms of sharing that data between ourselves. Um, and having somewhere to put it is is really key to that. And the RICS database has been has been there for a while. It's 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 a bit clunky, and and there's a lot of work being done at the moment to really. Um, streamline that and again will perhaps perhaps you might say one or two words to that to that piece uh yeah sure i mean yeah so as you alluded to this is sort of the next situation of the rick's database um rick's you know acknowledged that that it could be more user friendly that the data in there could be more transparent and given the huge amount of progress that's been made across the industry in the last couple of years they felt that the time is probably right now to to completely sort of revamp the database so it's pretty much being rebuilt from scratch um, the ISOT is one of a number of built environment institutes who are feeding into that process, but we're quite heavily involved. Um, looking likely to go live in the early part of next year. We're, they're talking about March at the moment, but um, we, we'll, we'll see how we get on. But certainly by the summer, um, and there'll be a, a white paper being published at COP that gives you a bit more info into exactly how it's going to be structured and why it will be so useful. Once it goes live, probably goes without saying, but we will be encouraging all members to use it on all projects, both in terms of uploading your data um, at the end of at the end of a project, so putting your carbon footprint onto there so that others can see it, but also using the database to help you set your own sort of benchmarks and understand what the rest of the industry is achieving on their projects. Fantastic, thank you, Will. Yeah, um, but no, no, also worth stressing: don't don't wait until that that work is complete before before um, kind of measuring and sharing carbon data in other ways. You know, we need to keep we need to keep doing that in the meantime. Uh, the final thing I just wanted to mention on here is is a piece around uh, regulation, and it's it's part Z, which again many of you will will know about. So um, there's 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 also a lot of discussion at the moment about um, the need to to introduce regulation as one way of um, uh, regulation to limit embodied carbon as one necessary step to to ensuring a kind of consistent uh, good practice across across all of our projects and get and get all, all of our uh, design teams and project teams uh, you know in, on, a, on a similar playing field um, in this regard. And there is there is a proposal out there. It's it's a it's a proposed new document to sit along the suite of approved documents under the building regulations um, that that it's drafted to 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 help achieve this to limit to limit set carbon limits. Um, it, it's available to download again. There is a link on the slide, and um, there's also a link to um, formally. Uh, pledge support for the adoption of this of this document, and uh, many of of the declared firms have already signed up to support to support this and um, uh, you know I think it would be great um, if we could if we could really get be, get behind this as as one method for for helping to um, uh, to, to, to regulate to regulate carbon so um, again if you haven't seen and heard about part Z then um, please do go there and take a look so um, that's a really uh, quick uh, skim across the surface of, of uh, you know, an awful lot of and diverse and really valuable activity that's been going on that continues to, to go on across the industry. Um, uh, please do take a look to, 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 to read this through in a bit more detail. But one thing I didn't touch on here is the is the one in the top left of the screen, which is uh, the progress that the iStruct-D has made and is making specifically um, in this space at the moment. Uh, and I'd like to I'd like to hand over to um, uh, Shalini, Shalini Jagnarine Azan, who is a trustee board member of the institution um, and has, has very kindly joined us uh, uh, from where she's working at the moment in Haiti, um, doing some uh, uh, some of the assessment work there following the recent recent earthquake. But uh, Shalini is going to tell us a little bit about the work that the iStruct-T um, uh, is doing in this space. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and over to you, Shalini. Right. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to all of you joining us here today. As a follow on from Ed's excellent and informative presentation about industry wide progress, I will just take a few minutes to describe or to summarize what the institution has been doing. Um, in 2019, the board approved a mandate to put sustainability on par with life safety. Uh, this has been the key decision that has been driving all of the changes that we've been implementing at the institution, which I will summarize in the following slides.
firstly, the code of conduct. At the board, we approve changes advocating for our members to better understand the environmental impact of their work as structural engineers and to take measures to work more sustainably. We feel that this is fundamentally important to actively bring on board as practitioners. Now, the code of conduct is currently being updated, so do look out for the release in the coming months. In 2020, two new categories centered around sustainability were introduced to the annual structural awards, namely the award for minimal structural intervention and the award for zero carbon ambition. The minimal intervention category is particularly interesting because we're celebrating engineers who are able to help their clients to avoid building anything at all, proving that there's plenty of business opportunity out there for those of us who want to build less. We've had some excellent entries into both categories, um, which also required the submission of carbon calculations for the first time as a new judging criteria. The fantastic shortlisted entries are actually highlighted on the slide here. And the 2020 awards actually rolled over into 2021 because of the COVID restrictions last year. So I'm certainly uh, not alone when I express my anticipation in attending the ceremony on the 5th of November to celebrate and inspire engineering excellence. I hope you can all log on or tune into that. Next, another imp important change that we made at the institution uh, was the criteria for initial professional development and the chartered membership exams. We've put climate and the environment at the heart of this process, further reinforcing the importance of safeguarding our planet for future generations. An implicit change that's worth mentioning now will be the requirement for carbon calculations to be included in the daily work of structural engineers. More communications on this will follow in the coming months with an aim to fully transition into it by January, 2023. Uh, in terms of continued professional development, CPD and guidance, We've had many publications that have been produced and released in frenzy in the past year by our dedicated climate emergency task group. We published many tools and documents, including the How to Calculate Embodied Carbon publication, as well as a carbon calculator called the Structural Carbon Tool, which was developed with the help of Elliot Wood. This momentum will continue with the soon to be released Design for Zero publication, as well as an upcoming course on net zero structural design that's coming in 2022. It's one thing that we're never in shortage of at iStructy and that's continued professional development. We also initiated a networking concept called Sustainability Open Spaces or SOS, which is now run independently from iStructy. These are a series of small and typically informal meetings or open spaces, allowing our members and others to join together to share climate related questions, issues and ideas, and more importantly, to find support. If you aren't already an active participant, then I encourage you to please reach out via the link that's shown on this slide, as it's a great system for networking, particularly given our evolving COVID times. And lastly, collaboration. Now, Ed and Will already spoke a bit about this, um, so I'll just reiterate some of it. Um, we have been actively collaborating across the sector. As part of the Construction Industry Council, or CIC, the institution played a fundamental role in the development of the Climate Action Plan. We also work closely with the UK GBC and REBA to ensure that our members are involved and represented when crucial plans and conversations are happening. And the last um, exciting event that's coming up would be our fringe event that's taking place in Glasgow uh, that we'll spoke about in detail. That will be held in November. Um, for those of you who are in Scotland, then we look forward to seeing you in, uh, in person, you are invited, or you can join us via the online link. And we look forward to seeing you there. All of these activities and changes that have been uh, being implemented at the institution have been done and driven by the decision that we took in 2019, which I'll reiterate was to make sustainability on par with structural safety. It's imperative that we all understand the need to conscientiously design and perform with the future in mind. 
And this is a message that we aim to transmit to all of our members and to all of you. Uh, before I close, I'd just like to thank the task group for their continued work dedication and for being the catalyst behind all of these activities and changes, as well as to the hundreds of people who support their work. And to all of you for joining in today and for being a part of this movement. Thank you. Thank you, Shalini. Um, that's really fantastic. And just, we've got, I wonder whether it's worth pausing for a moment in case anybody has any questions for Shalini or Mike or, or on anything that, that you've heard so far. I see there is one question from Phoebe Moses in the chat, um, uh, which is about uh, the in-person COP26 event, which apparently is sold out on Eventbrite. Does anybody know if that's, if that's right? Uh, yeah, I can tell you about that. So uh, because uh, the number of COVID cases in Glasgow have been higher than the rest of the UK, there are still restrictions up there currently, which means that at the moment, the 140 seat auditorium is limited to 70. And those 70 spaces have been filled. There is a waiting list which you'll be put on if you apply. And we're hoping that between now and the event, the, those restrictions will be removed. And then most of the people on the waiting list will get in. And we're also in discussions about trying to overfill if we can. So if, if you are going to be in Glasgow, do sign up um, for the in-person event. It'd be great to see you there. And if you do come along, try and bring, bring a non-engineer with you. See if we can convince people in the wider industry to get on board with some of this action too. Okay, thanks, Will. And I uh, just noticed another question pop up about um, asking about plan changes to the ISTRACT exam regarding sustainability. I don't know whether whether you might be able to say anything on that, or possibly Shalini from a board uh, trustee board perspective. Do you want me to go first, Shalini, and you can? I jump... think I defer to you, Will. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we we can't say a huge amounts at the moment. There's going to be comms around this over the next couple of months. Um, but fundamentally, what we're doing is putting sustainability and carbon at the core of, of the exam and, and the whole IPD process. So, you know, we've always had a sustainability el sustainability element to the IPD process, and we've always encouraged, you know, efficient, good structural engineering design throughout the exam. We're just drawing this out more deeply now, and it will be sort of, you know, th throughout throughout the whole of both. So, um, yeah, watch this space, and there's, there's going to be more coming about this in the next couple of months. This won't be Nothing will be imposed until we think the start of 2023. So there'll be plenty of time to, to work around this and get ready for it. Thank you. Um, so if there are no more questions at the moment, we'll move on to the next um, to the next bit of this session. Um, uh, so this session is all about where are we now? Um, and um, you've heard quite a lot from us. And now we'd like to hear a little bit from, from you. Um, uh, so uh, just to try and sort of understand where you're at as individuals and as and as declared firms so we have um, we're going to go into menti in a session a second we've um, we've got some uh questions just to sort of take take the temperature i suppose of progress um uh, around those of you on on the call so if i if i try and share my screen here so um uh i'm not most of you i'm i, I think may be familiar with menti but um please please go to www.menti.com and type in the code that's at the top of the screen here, 78703276, and that should get you into the, into the questionnaire here. Um, oh, I can see lots of people, lots of hearts going on in the bottom right-hand corner. That must be, I don't know what that means, but I, I'm just I thinking that must be a good sign. So um, uh, some of you, uh, may want to do this on a computer if you've got another screen, but but you know maybe it's easier to do this on your phone as well, so you can still see the presentation on your screen and answer the answer the questions on your phone. But it looks like everyone's kind of got the hang of that. Um, so we're going to um, we're going to just go through a few questions here now. Um, uh, what we want is really just your instinctive reaction here. So um, the results are all going to be anonymous. Um, this is just to get a flavour of current uh, collective progress. Um, so please don't think too hard about the questions or agonise too much about whether we've got the wording of the question perfect. Um, uh, please just click the, re uh, click the response that you feel uh, most comfortable with. Um, OK, we've got a reasonable number signed in here, so I think we'll, we'll try and go, go with the first question if we can. I can make this move on. Okay, so um, the first question is really just to kind of uh, just to test how you feel that uh, how successful you feel that you you or your practice has been 
uh, at raising awareness of climate and biodiversity emergencies um, and influencing outcomes uh, on a scale of one to five, on zero to five over the past year. So, okay, people are voting already, this is excellent. So this is really just uh, trying to see how successful we've been. And we split it up into three um, different, uh, different uh, stakeholders here. So uh, amongst clients, how successful have we been at really engaging with our clients on these topics, perhaps influencing the brief on projects? Um, how successful have we been amongst our collaborators? So this might be working with other technical disciplines, architects, quantity surveyors, um, and, and all the other members of the project teams that we work with. And then the third one is around supply chains. I, I know that a lot of the talk, talks that we've been having recently are, have been around design and uh, you know what we can do as designers to really move the dial here. But recently I've, I've been having at least many more conversations with contractors and specialist subcontractors and the supply chain um, and really starting to understand the, the, the necessity to engage more closely with the supply chain to really make sure that what we actually build um, is as good as it can be. So it looks as if the um, if, if the coloured bars have settled down here. Um, so an interesting uh, range of influence across those three different stakeholders. So um, a big spread amongst clients, and maybe and it's hard to know whether that um, that's that's uh, a, a great spread of different types of clients, or 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 um, uh, but certainly a range of of success there in terms of really engaging with with our clients on this. Uh, more more success um, uh, engaging with our collaborators and influencing our collaborators, it seems, um, which, that's interesting. Um, so as project teams, as design teams, maybe maybe it's a sign that we're, we're all on the same page and, and pulling in the same direction more often. Um, but the lowest score is amongst supply chain. And I, again, I guess to me, that's perhaps not so surprising as, as, as certainly, certainly for me, those conversations with supply chain um, are really are really in their infancy compared to the conversations that, that that I know many of us have been having with collaborators and clients. Okay, but that's really interesting. Um, thank you. But an average of two two point four. Um, so uh, overall, you know, we're not doing badly. You know, we've all been pretty influential um, in in raising awareness and and influencing outcomes on projects. That's really great. So we'll move on. Uh, the next two questions are about carbon and measuring measuring of, of carbon. So this first question is around uh, how much your firms encourage the measurement of carbon and setting of carbon targets um, on, on individual projects. So um, a range of uh, responses here from yes um, on all projects at all stages of design to on some projects at some stages, but you know, maybe a bit patchy. Um, only when asked for by the client or, 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 or not at all for, for one reason or another. So we'll just let that, let the donut settle down. It's, uh, it seems to seem to settle down now. So, um, wow, about half, half of you saying yes on, on, on uh, projects at some stages, um, which is fantastic. And nearly a quarter on all projects at all design stages, which is which is brilliant. So so look over three quarters of the of the um, of the chart, you know, positive, positive around, uh, you know, proactive action from within firms. Um, so that's great. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to know how this compares to where we were uh, collectively a, a year ago, but it feels to me as if that's really strong progress compared to perhaps perhaps 12 or 24 months ago. I'm going to move on to the next the next question. So uh, this is also about carbon targets, but this is more about um, firm wide targets um, on on project carbon. Um, so this is not um, sort of scope one to three emissions. How much how much um, business travel you're doing? Whether you're leaving the lights on in the office. This this is about commitments on projects. Um, uh, whether uh, you're, you're setting targets um, against industry figures, um, against uh, benchmarks of your previous projects, um, 
uh, whether you're whether you haven't set targets yet but are considering it or whether whether you feel for one reason or another that setting those uh, uh, portfolio based targets are perhaps less relevant or, or useful to you as, a, as an organization maybe because of the range of projects you have or something um, so a lot of green a lot of green on the donut um, uh, Mike or or Will or, or Shalini, I mean, I invite you to, to kind of you know share any kind of observations or comments that you might have about about these these results. Um, uh, I, I know you you have lots of these conversations. Whether this sort of uh, resonates with with what you'd expect to see from from the conversations that you've had. I'd say Ed, if I can, um, it's it's really important that firms are considering it, and and it does take quite a lot of consideration um, if you're going to get it right, um, but. I think the important thing is to get it started is to uh, if, if you know it's difficult to know exactly the right way to benchmark your your figures, you might not want to set the same targets in every office if you're multi office and so on, so there's going to be some subtlety in it. Um, and I think I would say start somewhere move from considering it to doing something. <laughs> um, but but we all admit that um, that it's not the there isn't a, an absolutely defined right way, uh, right targets, the right way applied in the right way. But but without some kind of target in, in the practice, um, I think it's really hard for people to know what they're aspiring to. I'd certainly say that. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely echo that. And we, I mean, we'll touch on this later, I think, Ed, um, but I mean, it seems like a relevant thing to mention right now. We, we held a small sort of round table about a week or so ago on this topic specifically with a few different firms sort of plucked from across the breadth of the industry. And um, yeah, there was definitely a set, some of the feedback we got from those who had set targets was actually just, you know, getting on with it and getting started leading to the sort of behavioural changes where you calculate carbon on everything and then start to design for it was a really strong message that came out. So I'd, yeah, absolutely echo what Mike's saying around. If you are in that green part of that pie chart, just work out what the sort of, you know, what would you have to do to get started on this, just sort of move forward on, on targets. But yeah, re really, I, I think really positive to see so few people having said no. You know, that's, that's five percent less than 5% of the graph is just no, we don't think it's helpful. So everybody else seems to fall into the other camp of this. This is really useful. So if the question now is, how do you turn those greens into yellows or blues? Exactly. Good. OK, thank you both. We'll move to the, to the next question. So um, uh, what we've talked about so far is about influence and raising awareness and uh, measurement and carbon. And of course, those are all really key sort of fundamental um, aspects of the of the declaration. But uh, but there are lots of other aspects as well that 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 um, maybe we haven't paid so much attention to. But but um, and that's what this is really trying to tease out here. Um, uh, and we, again, on a scale of zero to five, um, uh, it would be great if you can describe uh, your progress. Um, uh, with with these following five categories, so the first is around progress in terms of upskilling within your organisation. Um, so that might be around uh, making sure everyone kind of understands, uh, you know, how to count carbon, but also is kind of you know understands uh, all, all of the kind of issues around you know circular economy and, and the broad, broader um, uh, broader aspects of the declaration. Second is around uh, sharing knowledge beyond your organization. So that might be events like this um, or, or other ways in which you have been uh, sharing and, and engaging uh, uh, beyond your organization to, to kind of uh, improve that upskilling and sharing, sharing uh, awareness and knowledge. The third is around specifically sharing carbon data again. The fourth is around um, adopting regenerative design principles so this is this is one of the pledges in the declaration that i don't know certainly i've struggled uh, quite a lot to sort of really kind of get my head around what that means or how i how i do that um be good to get your thoughts on that and and the final one is around um biodiversity and how we as structural engineers uh, can kind of respond to the necessity to to address the loss of biodiversity so those are the categories um 
so the left hand side is is no progress at all and the right hand side is absolutely smashing it so none of us are absolutely smashing it on 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 these on these categories but but certainly upskilling um seems to have the most progress which is maybe uh, you know that, that's perhaps what we might expect and sharing knowledge beyond beyond individual organizations um the sharing carbon data one is actually for me at least perhaps a little bit higher than i might have um expected and it'd be really good um to uh to, to have to, if people can share their thoughts on how how they're going about sharing carbon data and, and how they're achieving that that would be really interesting to understand and some quite good progress about regenerative design principles as well so certainly kind of understanding specifics around that would be good um but but lesser so around um addressing biodiversity okay but again we haven't got an average on this one but um, maybe somewhere around somewhere around two um so pretty good Mike, Will, any comment, anything you wanted to add on that? Any comments there? Interesting that nobody's given themselves five out of five on upskilling within the organisation. It surprises me. Everyone, I, I wonder if there's a sort of element of modesty to all of this. Oh, oh no, no. Some people have. Five people have. Five people yeah. have. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd be interested to hear from those as to maybe people who have given themselves five or some of these could share some tips in the chat for other people or give us some thoughts on what's what's particularly been successful in your firm that'd be interesting to hear okay um I'll just say it um I, i've i've put a little uh, i'm not sure it's a live link actually i didn't live it but if people want to know a bit more about regenerative design and i know this is a question that's come back in the in the built environment uh declares questionnaire which i'll be talking about briefly in the future um the people are asking what do we mean by regenerative design um there's a place to go www.livingfuture.org which tells you all about li the living building challenge and it and it does set out some very strong ways we, where we can steer our projects towards carbon carbon negative actually starting to hit projects which can actually heal the environment and and be better for people um, it's well worth a look at uh, it, it's a starting point uh, and a far, far better way of um, judging the quality of your projects than, than a lead or REM can give you. Great. Thank you, Mike, for that. Um, just uh, just picking up a couple of other comments in the in the chat as we go along. So David Laversha um, says that having set targets has been a massive catalyst for debate, training and action um everyone's different but but proving invaluable to understand where we are and where we need to get to so there's there's an endorsement from someone who who works for a practice who have who have set those those um uh portfolio wide targets thank thanks for that david um and penny penny notes that it's always a moving target which of course it will continue to be right i'm going to move to the final question here um so this is uh uh, so everything that we've, we've um, sort of quizzed so far has been around progress to date, um, you know, the status quo and what we've been up to recently. And this final question is really just taking a little bit, getting a little bit of a temperature test as to, as of right now, um, what would you describe as the most important area for focus as we move forward? And um, of course, you can write whatever word you want here, but um, I've just uh, I've put some some choices here that you might you might consider. Let the word cloud expand. I don't know why it needs to move about so much to make it very seasick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll give it another another few seconds still um still bouncing around but uh, legislation is big and blue and in the middle and not and not moving anywhere by the looks of things so we seem to have, we seem to have more or less settled now so that's um that's really interesting i'm i'm kind of struck by the uh, by the range um 
but clearly some uh, strong feeling around upskilling, sharing, uh, uh, benchmarking, policy and legislation um, com coming out of that. Yeah, and a few of the smaller words are sort of repeats of some of the bigger ones. So upskilling exists, but so does training, for example. So it'd be interesting. Yeah, I think there's some really key messages in that, aren't there? I think so. And um, so that so that's um, oh, still moving. Um, so that's really great. Um, thank you for your feedback there. That's the last the last question that we had. Now, um, um, of course, this this will be. Uh, because this is being recorded it will be shared but i think we can probably share the the results of this of this menti poll directly with you as well just for for interest afterwards um but that's fantastic so i'm going to i'm going to stop sharing just there okay thank you for your feedback there um uh, that's um Unless there are any other questions there, I'm been keeping a, a an eye on the chat here. But a um, uh, comment from Megan about um, uh, data collection in the US. Um, but 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 SE 2050 database has just gone live. Great. Well, we'll be hearing from Megan very shortly, so she might she might want to touch on that in more detail. Thanks for that, Megan. Um, in fact, that's the end of the, the first session in a way. We're about, we're, we're about 10 minutes ahead of time, but that's, I'm kind of happy with that because um, it gives us more time for, for discussion later on in the programme.